What is up, guys? This is Michael Sean from Unison Games coming at you with um, one of the first um, Magic the Gathering openings for this channel. Um, Magic is a game that I really like. I like the game a lot, um, but obviously my main game, if you know anything about this channel, is Pokemon. Probably my number two game is Transformers, and then Magic kind of comes in at number three for me, and I do really enjoy it. Um, I run bunches of events for it. They're usually RSVP only, so you may not have attended those like the Pokemon ones, but um, but it's 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 a fun it's a fun game. It's really cool, and today I've got a cool product, the Mystery Booster. Now I must confess, when I play Magic, it's usually limited or standard. The Mystery Booster is really not a standard project. It was made for limited, um, but I thought if I was going to branch out, get into Pioneer, Modern, even older formats, Commander, stuff like that, this is just a fantastic product for there. Plus, there's tons of value, and I got a fantastic deal on these uh, Mystery Booster boxes. So let me uh, crack this thing open. Um, so I'm going to be honest. I did a lot of research on this product, but there's going to be cards that most likely i'm gonna miss you know i may i may uh open a card and you'd be like oh my gosh it's an amazing card i might not even say anything about it um feel free to to hit up the comment section with that of course just as like some interesting things about the mystery booster box there are less booster packs in this product it is sort of like a specialty product because you're kind of guaranteed value out of it um so if we take a look at uh let's see there's got to be a contents thing on here maybe there's not a contents thing on here uh it doesn't look like it cool i believe that there's only 20 packs in here though so if we kind of separate them into piles of five yep one pile it's a good way to do our opening anyway that we can kind of track how we're going you know it might be 24 yes it is 24 uh, mystery booster packs here. Every single one of them is has a guaranteed foil in it, uh, as well. Obviously, a rare like a normal booster pack. There's guaranteed to be cards from uh, older sets in it, and there's all kinds of stuff. So let's let's go ahead and get this thing cracking here. I'm really excited to see what we get. So there's no like pack tricks in Magic like Pokemon, but let's. See what we can do. We're not going to spend a ton of time on every card, but we got Meditation Puzzle, Disenchant, which has been reprinted like a million times, uh, Mind Sculpt, Shimmer Scale Drake. This is kind of interesting. It's got some cycling flying. I like that. Mark of the Vampire. Sweet, sweet. Unburden. Target player discards two cards and it's cycling. That seems pretty decent. Gutter Snipe, which I know, I know that that is a decent card. Um, Kartosh of Zeal. Of course, you had the Kartoshes in the Amon Ket block, and kind of each color got one. Briarhorn. Uh, I've heard about this card, actually. Pretty cool. When it ETBs, target creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. And then it's got Evoke. That's uh, That seems pretty good. That seems really good, actually. Um, fade into Antiquity. Cool. Citadel Castellan. Juggernaut. Okay, so they have kind of the, the older border cards. There's one in every pack. This is Weathered Wayfarer. Search for a land card. Reveal it. Put it into your hand. It is a rare, which is cool. Uh, then shuffle your library. That seems uh, really strong. It seems really strong for one mana, and it's a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, it seems pretty good. Okay, uh, Serene Dib Efreet, I think that is correct. At the beginning of your upkeep. Serene Dib Efreet deals one damage to you. It has a 3-4 flyer for three. That seems uh, seems pretty strong. And then our hollow card is Chimney Imp. Uh, when it's put into the graveyard from play, target opponent puts a card from his or her hand on top of his or her library. Uh, that's kind of cool. Kind of cool. All right. Let's go to the next one. As I understand it, there's pretty fair amount of value in this set. Just... Um, even that pack, you know, I'm not familiar with all the values of everything, but even some of those cards seem to be pretty decent, which I wouldn't be surprised if some of them were worth a couple bucks. So, uh, let's take a look. Uh, Oresco's Swift Claw, Passivism, another one of those cards has been reprinted a million times. Everdream, cool. 
Maximize altitude. Senjir Vampire. Flying when this creature is dealt damage by Senjir Vampire this turn dies. Put a plus one plus one on this. That's, that's kind of cool. Uh, Urborg Uprising. Cool. Hammerhand. Wildfire Emissary. This is a protection from white. Wild Mongrel. Discard a card. Wild Mongrel gets plus one plus one. It becomes a color of your choice until the end of the turn. That's kind of cool. Alpine Grizzly. Seems like just kind of a generic. Extract from Darkness. Each player puts the top two cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. Then put a creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. That's kind of cool because you can steal their creatures too. That seems uh, very Demir-ish. Okay, uh, Great Furnace. It's just an artifact land that makes uh, red mana. I would assume that probably because it's an artifact, it's more like searchable, uh, which which is which is probably pretty decent. Okay, Jushi Apprentice. So we got kind of one of these. Um, you know, you can flip it. That's pretty sweet. Very interesting. I've actually never seen one of these in person, so that's kind of cool. It is a rare, which is nice. Evra Halcyon Witness. This is a pretty decent card. Lifelink, exchange your life total with Evra. Halcyon Witness's power. It's pretty cool. Um, so if you you buff it up, or you could just take four four if you get down lower than that. And then our hollow is Stormcrow. Just flying one, two, for two. Kind of cool. Very sweet. All right. Let's take another look. It's kind of a good thing we're going a little slower than we might normally go uh, with these. Um, so it, you know, magic isn't quite like Pokemon when you when you when you get a, a box of Pokemon or a, or a pack of Pokemon. It's like there's so many pre evolutions that we really don't need to spend any time on because they're just in the game that we can get to other cards later on. Um, but magic isn't really like that. Even even you know the common cheap cards are are playable in their own right. So kind of an interesting thing with magic. So we got eyes in the skies, soul warden, containment membrane. Um, cool, cool. This is so. This is uh, you got some stuff with your teammate. I think that's for like uh, two headed. I like to call it two-headed dragon, but it's two-headed giant, like stuff like that. That's kind of interesting. Uh, distortion strike, cable therapy, uh, mephitic vapors. I've heard of this card actually. All creatures get minus one, minus one until end of turn. Surveil two. It is kind of a more recent card. It's got the Demir stamp on it, which is kind of fun. All right, reckless fire weaver. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, steals one damage. That's that's really strong. I think that could be a cool, cool deck, maybe like in Pioneer or something. First invocation, manifest the top card of your library, then put two plus one plus one counters. Cool, cool. Zendikar Royal, pretty sweet. So whenever a land enters, you put two two green elemental creature token onto the battlefield. That seems like it could be really cool. Greenwood Sentinel. This is, uh, I think this has been reprinted a couple times, actually. Shambling Remains. It can't block. You can unearth, so return it from the graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste. It's kind of cool. And then you exile at the beginning of the next end step. Or if it would leave anyway. That's cool. All right, Herald's Horn. I've heard uh, really good things about this card. Very important um for tribal decks uh so i do actually think that this is one of the uncommons that has some value to it um as herald's horn enters the battlefield you choose a creature type creature spells you cast of the chosen type cost one less to count to cast at the beginning of your upkeep look at the top card of your library if it's a creature card of that chosen type you may reveal it and put it in your hands so it's really really strong if you're going to play like a specific like like a zombie deck or something like that you know most of your creatures are going to be zombies so this this is uh pretty sweet Okay, our older card is a rare, which is nice. Assemble the Legion. Um, Thalia's Lancers is our regular rare card. Uh, you can search your library for legendary cards. That's pretty cool. Put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Very nice. And our hollow is Game Trail Changeling. Uh, so it's every creature type at all times, which is kind of cool. You can kind of see it's like it's a goo thing. Um, and then it has Trample. Sweet. So, so far, our um, foils have all been commons, which is fine, but I'd love to see some, you know, 
foils be rare or mythic even. Okay, uh, after Protector, Wake the Reflections, Calculated Dismissal, Counterless Play 3, cool. That's, that seems really good for maybe like Izzet decks or things like that, where you're trying to get instant sorceries into the graveyard a lot, so that, that seems cool. Impulse, look at the top four cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, the rest on the bottom. Your library in any order, kind of cool. Catacomb Slug, Quest for the Grave Lord. It's got a creepy little horror golem thing. Um, very nice. Creates some zombies for you. Ruinous Gremlin. I actually remember the original printing of this card. Kind of cool. Nimble Blade Kenra. Uh, prowess. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn. Kind of interesting maybe in like a like an aggro deck of some sort uh, where you're just... Um, you know, you got a 1-3 for 2, which is fine, and then you're playing, like, burn spells and stuff. Uh, Gift of Growth. Elvish Visionary. Just draws you a card when it comes in. That's kind of... That's, that seems really strong for 2 mana, actually. Um, Quasily Pride Mage. I probably just murdered that. Uh, Exalted. Whenever a creature you control attacks alone, that creature gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. That's cool. Sacrifice. Quasily Pride Mage. Destroy target artifact or enchantment that actually seems like a really strong uh ability where you don't really want to just like run like disenchant or something you can actually run a creature that that gives more value for it guardians of Miletus. all right we got hurricane hurricane deals x damage to each creature with flying and each player that seems kind of insane very cool uh decree of justice put an x f put x44 four, four white angel tokens with flying onto the battlefield as cycling when you cycle it, you may pay X if you do put X11 one, one white soldier creature tokens onto the battlefield. So either where you cycle or you cast this card and create tokens equal to the amount that you paid or similar to the amount that you paid for the card or for the cycling of the card. So that's, that's pretty cool. And then we have Gilder Bairn. Pretty sweet. It is an uncommon hollow for us. Got like a split thing. Love the art on that card. Really cool. Really interesting. Okay. Take a look at our next pack. I'm gonna start to speed up just a little bit. Isolation Zone. Youthful Knight. It's a cool, cool art for Youthful Knight. Dreadwaters. Doorkeeper. I feel like this is kind of like one of the famous cards. Ah, you see that art. Kind of just like around magic in general. Dark Dabbling. Lethal Sting. Seems pretty good. You destroy target creature and you just minus 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 one minus one one of your creatures. Very cool. Wayward giant. Lightning shrieker. Wild size. It's just like a funny card. I like that. It's cool. Aura gnarled. So gains gets plus one plus one for each aura on the battlefield. That seems like it could be really strong because you just build with all the best auras in the game. You know, and creatures power less can't block it so that that's pre that's pretty good this seems like a seems like a really good card sprouting thrinax uh when it dies create a one one green sapperling creature tokens three one one green sapperling creature tokens very cool bottle gnomes seems interesting okay our old card is null spine dragon Flying, when Null Spine Dragon comes into play, you may discard your hand and draw cards equal to the damage dealt to target opponent this turn. That seems really crazy, actually. Um, very cool. It's kind of like just like a like a big, big bad dragon, you know what I mean? Collective Brutality, Escalate, discard a card, so you can pay uh, this cost for each mode chosen beyond the first. Okay, so uh, choose one or more target opponent reveals his or her hand you may choose an instant or sorcery card from it that player discards that card target creature gets minus two minus two till end of turn target opponent loses two life you gain two life cool nice just cheap black spell and for our uh hollow we got harmonic sliver all slivers have when this creature comes into play destroy target artifact or enchantment i bet this card sees play um i'm not sure how much it's worth i didn't see it on any of the lists that i saw but i bet you it's not too bad. So because there are so many like really good hollows in the set, 
you know, all like the top 10 lists and stuff, um, there may be cards that are really valuable, but like the top 10 are m just so much more valuable. You know what I mean? Like there's so, there's so many good cards. It's hard to know all of them at once, you know? Um, we got ephemeral shields, star crowned stag and soul artifact river serpent twins of the more estate cool trial of ambition fireball uh, on crop crasher hooting mandrills this is a, one of those delve cards which is cool um fertile ground enchant land whenever enchanted land is tapped for mana, its controller adds an additional one mana of any color. That seems really strong for two mana. Very good. We get Abzan Charm. Choose one exile target creature with power three or greater, or you may you draw two cards and you lose two life, or distribute two plus one points one counters among one or two target creatures. Kind of cool. The whole idea of that is that like each one is, uh, you know representative of what that color likes to do so it's kind of cool uh, arcane sanctum enters the battlefield tapped it's kind of like our triumphs that we just got in ikoria um which is uh, pretty sweet good card okay we got a rare here with wargate search your library for a permanent card with converted mana cost x or less put it into play then shelf your library that seems like a pretty strong uh, tutoring effect birds of paradise for one green flying and tap to add one mana of any color to your mana pool it seems very strong for uh, green decks early game options and ravenous trap is our um our foil very cool Let's go to our next pack here all right marked by honor take vengeance we like Take Vengeance. It's just a fun card. Invisibility. Leapfrog. Vessel of Malignity. Shulking Ghost. I've seen this card in some decks. When it begins target a spell or ability, you sacrifice it. It's just a flying 2 1. Kind of cool. Furnace Whelp. Undying Rage. All right, Beast Breaker of Bala Ged. So you can level this up, and it just becomes uh, stronger and stronger. Uh, it starts out as a two-two for two, which is great. This seems uh, pretty pr a pretty decent card. Um, Crushing Canopy, Weapons Training, or Weapons Trainer. Sorry, each creature you control gets plus one plus zero as long as you control an equipment. It's kind of cool. Breaker of Armies, one of those colorless Eldrazi. All creatures able to block Break of Armies do so. And it's a 10-8 for 8. Okay. Crenelated or Grenelated Wall. Um, it's a 4-drop wall, 0-4. Target creature gets plus 0, plus 4 until end of turn if you tap it. That's cool. Okay. Teferi Temporal Archmage. I would assume that this is probably worth some money <laughs> because uh, Teferis are always kind of crazy. Um, it's, a, it's a Mythic here. Let's take a look at what it does. For six mana, plus one, look at the top two cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, and the other on the bottom of your library. Minus one, untap up to four target permanents. It seems really strong. Minus 10, you get an emblem with uh, with you may activate loyalty abilities of planeswalkers you control on any player's turn, any time you could cast an instant. That's uh, really, really good. And this can be your commander. So yeah, that seems that seems really strong. Um, yeah, I um, uh, would say that's probably the best card we pulled so far. We got Delay, um, just for two, you counter target spell. If it was countered this way, remove it from the game. Actually, I think this got a reprint recently in another set, which is kind of cool. All right, I'm going to stick those over there. Let's take a look. All right. We got Soul Mender. It's a pretty decent card. Uh, Gideon's Lawkeeper. Pondering Mage. Strategic Planning. Uh, I've seen this card in a, in a, in a decent 
amount of lists. You know, look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, rest in your graveyard, graveyard pretty decent. Aid the Fallen is pretty cool. Wake of Vultures. Keldon Hall Birder. Distemper of the Blood. Target creature gets plus two, plus two, and gains trample until end of turn. Madness for one. If you discard this card, discard it into exile. When you do, cast it for its madness cost or put it into your graveyard. Kind of cool. Time to feed. Kavu Primarch. Underworld Coinsmith. Bomat Bazaar Barge. So the vehicles that you can tap creatures and they kind of like get in and drive the thing. It's it's kind of interesting mechanic. All right, Hakon Stromgald Scourge. I believe I pronounced that correctly. Uh, you can play this from your graveyard, but not from anywhere else. As long as Hakon is in play, you may play Night Cards from your graveyard. When Hakon is put into graveyard from play, you lose two life. Seems uh, seems pretty strong in like uh, your zombie zombie type decks. Pretty sweet. Uh, Grave Titan. I actually have heard some stuff about this card. It is a mythic, which is great. Death Touch. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, put two 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 black zombie creature tokens onto the battlefield. Really really cool. Uh, another great zombie card. Kind of cool that we got two great zombies right in a row. Then we got uh, Lumith L Lumi Thread Field. Creatures you control get plus O plus one, and you can morph. You may play this face down as a 2 2 creature for three, turn it face up at any time for its morph cost. Uh, kind of cool. Looks really sweet, too. Just, just a sweet looking card. That was, seemed like a pretty decent pack. All right. So this set has like tons and tons of cards. So we're seeing, we're just seeing like so many cards over and over. You know, not seeing a lot of doubles, which is which is kind of cool. It makes for an interesting pack opening experience. All right, we got Ephemerate, Lingering Souls, Stream of Thought, Coral Helm Guide, Lazotep Behemoth, Wander in Death. This is a pretty decent card. Return up to two creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, which a lot of other things do, but this one is cycling, which is kind of nice. Kiln Fiend. Desert Ceridon. Uh, Ripperian Tiger, I believe is how you would say that. Ferocious Zeng. Bounding Krasis. Uh, one of those flash for Simic cards. When, when it enters the battlefield, you may tap or untap target creature. Seems pretty cool stop something from attacking it's also a 3 3 for 3 which which seems really solid sunset pyramid when it enters the battlefield with three brick counters on it you can remove a brick counter to draw a card or you can scry one with it pretty cool doom gape cool looking thing uh trample at the beginning of your upkeep sacrifice a creature you gain life equal to that creature's toughness it just kind of eats things for you also it's kind of gigantic for seven mana, you get a 10-10. That's pretty huge. Okay, Mana Crypt is uh, really, 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 really good. It is the best card in the set. So uh, that's pretty awesome that we pulled it. It's a zero-cost artifact at the beginning of your upkeep. Flip a coin. If you lose a flip, Mana Crypt deals three damage to you. But for free, you just get to add two colorless mana to your mana pool. This is uh, a very good card. We're going to be... Careful with it. Put it over here. And Teferi's Puzzle Box is another amazing card. That's that's insane that we pulled a Hollow Puzzle Box and a Mana Crypt in the same pack. Wow, that's hardcore. Uh, Teferi's bu Puzzle Box says at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player puts the cards in his or her hand on the bottom of his or her library in any order, then draws that many cards. Uh, pretty pretty sweet. Pretty sweet card. Wow, those are those are both amazing. Um, yeah, that was, that was a fantastic crap pack. Very, very nice. Okay, let's take another one. All right. Bonds of Faith. Exultant Sky Marcher. Gone Missing. River Wheel Aerialists. Revenant. Eternal Thirst. 
Bring Low, this is another one of those cards that I've seen around in some lists. Uh, deals 3 damage to target creature. If that creature has a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, it deals 5 damage to it instead. It's obviously dealing 5 damage for 4 mana at instant speed in the color red. Seems pretty decent. Goblin Locksmith, I remember when this was big. When it first came out, Pierce the Sky... Uh, Sylvan Scrying, search your library for a land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. Pretty good tutoring. Savage Twister, Savage Twister deals X damage to each creature. Uh, really good, really good removal for the Gruel colors. Um, seems really strong. <laughs> Jungle Hollow. Okay, uh, Lash Knife Barrier. When it comes into play, you draw a card. If a source would deal damage to a creature you control, it deals that much damage minus one to that creature instead. It's for three mana. Night Howler, it's an enchantment creature. Um, you can bestow it uh, and cast it as an aura spell if you'd like. Um, Night Howler and the enchanted creature each get plus X plus X, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Pretty sweet. And our hollow is Wall of Shards. Um, pretty cool. Uh, so it's a 1-8 defender. Now the cumulative upkeep causes your opponent to gain life, but this may not be such a bad card. Um, and maybe like an Orzhov thing where you're going to sacrifice it later in the game or something like that. Um, kind of interesting. Very cool. All right, let's check out the rest of our packs here. Knight of Old Benalia. Momentary Blink. Windcaller Avon, Bewilder, Vraska's Finisher, Noxious Dragon, Monastery Swift Spear, Prophetic Ravings, Strength in Numbers, Oak Gnarl Warrior. Uh, that seems really strong, actually. For 7 mana, you get a 5-7 with Vigilance and Trample, plus the art is pretty sweet. Terminate, destroy target creature. It can't be regenerated. Just really easy Rakdos removal for two. That's pretty sweet. Sigil of Valor. All right, Nemesis of Reason is a Leviathan Horror. Pretty freaky looking. Whenever it attacks, defending player puts the top 10 cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. <laughs> wow, so hardcore mill um, for five mana. Um, pretty sweet. All right, the Mirari Conjecture. Uh, Saga from Dominaria, return target instant card from your graveyard to your hand, return target sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand, and three, until the end of your turn, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy it, you may choose new targets for that copy. Seems pretty cool, and like maybe control, things like that. Okay, and we have Amulet of Vigor. This is actually one of the really good foils. Is a rare whenever a permanent enters the battlefield tapped, and under your control, you untap it. Uh, so basically, all, all your land cards that tap when they come in just don't tap. So you play all of your best land cards for with no downside. It only costs one to get on the field. So pretty sweet. It's a very good card. All right. Let's take a look at the next pack. All right. Mardu Horde Chief. Congregate. Now we had some, we've got some uncommons right off the bat. Dragon's Eye Savants. Hieroglyph Illumination. Uh, Genju of the Fence. Scarab Feast. Wojek Bodyguard. Chandra's Revolution. I remember this card actually. So it deals four damage to target creature, tap target land. That land doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. So it's sorcery speed, uh, four damage for four. It can only hit creatures. Seems a little weak, but then the fact that you can tap down one of their lands for, for their turn it is pretty sweet. Wild Growth, um, you, it's it's just a one one mana enchant land that gets you extra, extra mana. Pretty sweet. Conifer Strider. We got fire and ice here. Fire deals two damage divided as you choose among one or two targets. So kind of like could be a shock or you can tap target permanent, draw a card. Copper carapace. All right, we got a uh, Yavi Maya's embrace. That's what I'm gonna go with. You control enchanted creature 
enchanted creature gets plus two plus two and has trample so you can use this to kind of steal one of your opponent's creatures a little expensive but still pretty cool phyrexian arena an enchantment that says at the beginning of your upkeep you draw a card and you lose a life pretty sweet and Spellweaver Volute, it's another uh, enchantment. Aura, enchant instant cards in a graveyard. Whenever you play a sorcery spell, copy the enchanted instant card. You may play the copy uh, without paying its mana cost. That seems uh, pretty sweet. Very sweet. Another one of those cool looking cards. All right. Let's take a look here. Siegecraft. Inspire Charge, Embodiment of Spring, City Watch Sphinx, a Demonic Tutor. This is uh, probably the best uncommon we could have gotten. This, this is uh, just super strong. You just get to search for any card. Uh, really, really good. Uh, Innocent Blood, Leopard Spotted Geo, G A O, G A O. Not sure. I'm probably not doing that right. Orcish Aura Flame. Uh, attacking creatures you control get plus one plus oh. It's pretty pretty decent. Domesticated Hydra, just kind of a funny, funny idea for a card that you would just have a pet Hydra. Abundant Growth. Sultai Soothsayer. Enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library, put one of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Really good in Sultai colors. Alright, Crystal Ball. Rith the Awakener. Um, for six, you can flying. Whenever Rith the Awakener deals combat damage to a player, you may pay three. If you do, choose a color, then put a 1-1 one, one green sap rolling creature token onto the battlefield for each permanent of that color. So kind of interesting. You're either mana fixing into these colors or you're playing a multicolored deck, but you can choose one of the colors and then just flood the board. Plus, it's a 6-6 six, six for six, which seems pretty decent. All right, Sword of the Animist. Uh, equipped creature gets plus one plus one. Whenever equipped creature attacks, you may search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. And a rare is, or it's a rare, or hollow is Fiery Gambit, which is pretty sweet. Nice rare. Flip a coin until you lose a flip or choose to stop flipping. If you lose a flip, Fiery Gambit has no effect. If you win one or more flips, Fiery Gambit deals three damage to a target creature. If you win two or more flips, Fiery Gambit deals six. So it's just kind of like a, a fun. Fun thing, um, but kind of interesting. All right. War Behemoth, Knight of the Tusk, Treasure Cruise, Lay Claim, Breeding Pit, Trespasser's Curse, uh, Granitic Titan, Sweatworks Brawler, Hooded Brawler, two brawlers right in a row, Pima Outrider, Sedractus Spectre, very cool, Heavy Arbalest, okay, our older card is Kirvex Torch, uh, interrupts that target Kirvex Torch, co each cost an additional two to play, and it deals X damage to target creature or player, pretty sweet. Angel of the Dire Hour. Um, this says flash flying when Angel of the Dire Hour enters the battlefield. If you cast it from your hand, exile all attacking creatures. Seems pretty strong. It's a 5-4 for 7, but that's not really why you want to play it. You want to just get rid. It's like a board wipe. Pretty sweet. Inner Hollow is a rare here form of the dragon. Uh, enchantment that says at the beginning of your upkeep, form of the dragon deals 5 damage to target creature or player, at the end of each turn, your life total becomes five creatures without flying can't attack you. Kind of interesting. Kind of interesting. I could see it in some kind of like burn deck that just wins like really early in the game. Um, pretty sweet. Okay. Here we go. Divine Favor. Pegasus Courser. Chrono Stutter. Dazzling Lights. Dregscape Zombie, Knight's Whisper, Inferno Jet, um, deals 6 damage to target opponents. So 6 damage for 6 seems pretty decent, especially when it's got cycling on it. Seismic Stomp, Plummet, <laughs> this card is in like every other set, I feel like. Palaka Worm, 
Gelectrode. Cool. I like Is it color combos a lot, so I always find those interesting. Um, Sandstep Citadel, another one of those kind of triome lands, comes in tapped. Pretty sweet. Release the Ants deals one damage to target creature or player. Uh, clash with an opponent if you win. Return, release the ants to its owner's hand. Pretty interesting. Um, so you kind of almost do like almost a rock, paper, scissors type thing where you reveal the top card of your deck and the highest CMC is wins the clash. Kind of cool. Beacon of Immortality. Uh, double target player's life total. Shuffle Beacon of Immortality in to its owner's library. Kind of cool. And Balduvian Rage is our uh, our hollow. Sweet. We're definitely getting to pretty pretty far through the box. Already gotten some really good stuff. Let's see if we get some more good stuff. Dragon's Presence, Core Sky Climber, Send to Sleep, Omen Speaker, Fetid Imp, Tavern Swindler. I've seen this card in some some black decks and some formats. Pay three life, flip a coin. If you win the flip, you gain six life. Just as kind of like a meme, kind of fun, um, just to do it. Anok Tracker, Thresher Lizard. This thing's pretty decent. Um, as long as you have one or fewer cards in your hand, it gets plus one plus two. Kind of obviously you can build around that. Pax Favor, Return to Earth, Hidden Stockpile. Darksteel Citadel, another indestructible land that you can add one to your mana pool with. Okay, Sakashima the Imposter. Uh, as, uh, as Sakashima the Imposter comes into play, you may choose a creature in play. If you do, this comes into play as a copy of that creature, except its name is still this. It's still legendary, and it gains four, two, and two blues return this to its owner's hand at the end of this it's also on its own it's a three one for four but obviously you're going to be copying bigger creatures and such so kind of cool mizix's mastery exile target card that's an instant or sorcery from your graveyard for each card exiled this way copy it and you may cast a copy without paying its mana cost kind of cool you can overload it very nice and fungusaur is our hollow whenever it's dealt damage put a plus one plus one counter on it oh that's kind of cool Maybe target yourself with some cards or or just buff it so that it doesn't go down to attacks. All right. Here we go. Disposal Mummy. Avon Battle Priest. Skitter Eel. Jace's Phantasm. Infernal Scarring. Balustrade Spy. Arrow Storm deals 4 damage to target creature or player. Raid, if you attack with a creature this turn, it deals 5 damage to that creature or player, and the damage can't be prevented. Not bad. 5 damage for 5 is okay. Barging Sergeant. Runeclaw Bear. Uh, Anok Survivalist. Maverick Thopterist. Kind of cool. Uh, MSI Tome. Pay 4 and 5 and tap it. Draw 2 cards, then discard a card. Rise the Redeemed. Uh, this this is pretty sweet. I actually heard a lot of people talking about this one as well. Uh, you only pay one, and it's a 1-1, one, one, but you can pay three, tap, put a 1-1 one, one, green and white elf warrior creature token into play. Then you can six and tap it for each creature token you control, put a token into play that's a copy of that creature. This could be just like super strong in token decks. Um, so kind of interesting card there. Uh, Dictate of Heliod, Flash Creatures, you control, get plus two, plus two. And then Iron Mur, which is just a, a mana dork for red. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. All right. Moving, we have seven packs left. Seven packs left. Let's do it. God Pharaoh's Faithful. Blessed Spirits. Thought Claps. Uh, Mahamoti Jin, Nantuko Husk, uh, Sacrifice Creature, this gets plus two plus two. I've seen this in some uh, some zombie decks as well. Child of the Night, Barrage of Boulders. Um, Barrage of Boulders deals one damage to each creature you don't control. If you control a creature with power four or greater, creatures can't block this turn. That's uh, pretty decent. Cosmotronic Wave. 
Titanic Growth, Raincore, Hypothesize, Bone Saw, Goblin Game. So for seven, it's a sorcery. Each player hides at least one object, then all players reveal them simultaneously. Each player loses equal to the number of objects he or she revealed. The player who revealed the fewest objects then loses half or uh, half of his or her life rounded up. If two or more players are tied for fewest, each loses half his or her life rounded up. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Uh, Marin of Clan Nell Torth. Um, it is a legendary human shaman in Golgari colors. Whenever another creature you control dies, you get an experience counter. At the beginning of your end step, choose target creature card in your graveyard. If that card's CMC is less than or equal to the number of experience counters you have, return it to the battlefield. Otherwise, put it into your hand. That seems like a really fun card in Commander, um, and it's a mythic, and yeah, really cool. Golgari is always fun. We got Noggle Bandit as our hollow. Very cool. All right. Moving along. Steadfast Sentinel. Heavy Infantry. Catalog. Totally Lost. Return Centaur. Uh, Gary. <laughs> Classic. Bloodfire Expert. Battle Rampart. Fierce Empath. Cultivate. Uh, Bituminous Blast. Ghost Quarter. Flame Shot. You may discard a mountain from your hand instead of paying Flame Shot's mana cost. Flame Shot deals three damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures. Seems pretty cool. Eldritch Evolution. As an additional co uh, cost to cast this, you have to sacrifice a creature. Search your library for a creature card with CMC cost X or less, where X is two plus the sacrifice creatures converted mana costs. Pretty sweet. And our hollow is uh, Bramblewood Paragon. Pretty cool. Each other warrior creature you control comes into play with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. Each creature with a plus one plus one has trample. Seems really strong. Very cool. All right. Last five. Uh, Village Bell Ringer. God's Willing. Nibilus of Dusk. Thought Score. Touch of Moonglove, Festering Newt, Leaping Master, Cleansing Screech, Pulse of Maressa, skipped one there, Dawn's Reflection, Urban Evolution, um, that seems cool, Artisan of Kozilek, Tinker, Alicia, who smiles at death. Um, it costs three. It has first strike, three, two. Whenever Alicia, who smiles at death, attacks, you may pay two of uh, Orzhov colors. If you do, return target creature card with power two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped and attacking. Seems kind of cool. And Lapse of Certainty is our hollow. Very cool. Alright, Soul Strike Technique, Pitfall Trap, Flash Freeze, seems like a good sideboard card in a lot of formats, counter target red or green spell, Fog Bank, Dead Eye Tormentor, Fill with Fright, Stagger Shock, Fling, Praise Vengeance, Pinion Feast, Call of the Nightwing, uh, kind of cool. Just create a 1-1 uh, blue and black horror creature token with flying, but as Cypher. Yeah, you may exile this spell card encoded on a creature you control. Whenever that creature deals combat damage, its controller may cast a copy of the encoded card without paying its mana cost. So pretty sweet. All right, Dreadship Reef. Nice. Demir land for us. Uh... Imperial Armor, Grasp of Fate, uh, when it ETBs 
for each opponent exile up to one target non-land permanent that player controls until this leaves the battlefield. And our hollow is a rare, it's Fate Spinner. At the beginning of each uh, opponent's upkeep, that player chooses draw, a draw step, main phase, or combat phase. The player skips each instance of the chosen step or main phase this turn. Kind of cool. All right, we got three more packs. Rio Wall of 1000 Cuts. I've actually seen this in some decks before. As Defender and Flying when it uh it can actually attack as though it doesn't have defender if you pay one white rootborn defenses grasp of phantoms diminish walk the plank uh, bartisan bats built to smash defiant ogre orin reef invoker priest of titania rose main centaur Peace Strider, Font of a uh, Font of Mythos. Yeah, seems like it should be Fount of Mythos, but it says Font. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws two additional cards. Seems uh, pretty cool. Two-headed Giant. Whenever two-headed giant attacks, flip two coins. If both coins come up heads, two-headed giant gains a double strike until end of turn. If both coin coins come up tails. It gains menace until the end of turn. It's kind of a cool card. All right, our hollow is a rare Herald of Lishrock. Um, kind of cool flying. Cumulative upkeep says gain control of land you don't control, which is really good. Um, Herald of Lishrock gets plus one plus one for each land you control but don't own. And when it leaves play, each player gains control of each land he or she owns that you control. So makes sense. Uh, kind of cool. Steal everybody's land. Seems like a lot of fun. Does cost seven mana, though, which is, needless to say, quite a bit. All right, Apostle's Blessing. Uh, so that kind of land that we see here can be paid with either white or two life, so you can kind of splash this in. It's kind of cool. Sensor Splicer, Wall of Frost, Frost Lynx, Reaper of Night, Grotesque Mutilation, Giant Spectacle. Magma Spray deals two damage to target creature. If that creature would die this turn, exile instead. Uh, kind of uh, really good. Just one cost burn spell. Take down Thrashing Brontodon. Migratory Route. Create four 1-1 one, one white bird creature tokens of the flying. Basic Land Cycling, which means you can discard this card and search your library for a basic land card. Reveal it. Put it into your hand, then shelf your library. So kind of like a a better cycling. Pretty sweet. All right, Thran Dynamo adds three mana to your pool. Sadistic Hypnotist. Pretty sweet looking card. Sacrifice a creature. Target player discards two cards from his or her hand. Play this ability only anytime you could play a sorcery. All right, Deadly Tempest. Destroy all creatures. Each player loses life equal to the number of creatures he or she controlled that were destroyed this way. Kind of interesting. And Morrow is our um, hollow here. He is a rare. His power and toughness are equal to the number of cards in your hand. So you should probably play it with something that takes away your maximum hand size and has a bunch of draw. And we're into our last pack here. Let's take a look at what we get in our last pack. Hopefully something awesome. Spectral Gate Guards, Dauntless Cathar, Nagging Thoughts, Brilliant Spectrum, Thornbow Archer, Skeletal Scrying, Canyon Lurkers, Dragon Breath, Siege Worm, Bitter Blade Warrior, Wee Dragonauts, Blightened Fen, cool, Mistform Shrieker, Flying, you can pay one for Mistform Shrieker's type to become the creature type of your choice. You can also morph this, and it's a five cost three three. Whelming Wave, Four mana, return all creature to their owner's hands, except for krakens, leviathans, octopuses, and serpents. Shouldn't that be octopi? Uh, pretty sweet, though. Pretty sweet. And scrib ranger, or scribe, probably scribe ranger, um, has flash, flying protector from blue. Return a forest you control to its owner's hand. Untap target creature, play this ability only once each turn. 
Very cool. So um, I had a lot of fun with this box. A lot of cool cards, a lot of cool products that came in there. But uh, I know this is one of the first Magic videos that I've released. Feel free to hit me up in the comment section if you're a fan of MTG or maybe you play another game that I cover on the channel and you're just interested in other games. Or uh, Feel free to say what your favorite card that we pulled out of this box was and uh, definitely I will be bringing some more content to you guys in the near future so definitely be sure to like this video subscribe to the channel and throw a comment in that comment section with how you like MTG what your favorite format to play in is um, and uh, what your favorite card was out of this mystery booster box but hey I will see you guys very soon have a good time and be sure to check out the other videos on the channel